In this video, I'm going to show you how to do an advanced clone effect right inside of Adobe After Effects. So let's get into it. Now, before we jump into After Effects, it's really important that we have our footage. Now, we all know how to do a basic clone effect. You basically put your camera on a tripod, you film one part of the frame, you move over, film the next part of the frame, you cut the frame in half, and great, you've got an awesome clone effect. But what do you do when you want to do an advanced clone effect? So let's say you want one of your clones to walk in front of the other clone. Well, you would go about the same process. You'd lock your camera to a tripod, you capture the clean plate, so basically no one in the frame. Then you go ahead, film one part of the frame, shoot the next part of the frame, and feel free to do as much movement as you like. Just make sure that you're aware of where the other character should be. So don't go walking through their space. If you've got a clone sitting on a chair, don't go ahead and sit on that chair again because it's just not going to work. You have to know where the other character is in the space in order for this to work. So in my example, you can see my first clone is just doing some work on this light here. And then the other clone is just going to squeeze past them. The second clone is aware of the first person space. And that's why this clone effect works. If the second clone confidently walked through the space where the first clone was, then it wouldn't work because there's no spatial awareness. So keep that in mind. So with all of that said and done, let's jump into After Effects and I'll show you how to do this cloning effect. So here we go, we're inside of After Effects and we've got our three video clips imported. So this is the first clone. We'll turn this off. This is the second clone and then this is our clean plate in case we need it. So as you can see, if I was to do the normal process of cutting out the frame, unfortunately because they cross in front of each other, this clone is just going to disappear out of the mask. So instead, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to roto this clone on top. So the one that passes it in front of the other one, we're going to have to rotoscope them out and then drop that on top of the video on video layer two. So in order to do that, we first just want to reduce the opacity of the top layer. So we'll go T, pull this down to 50, and we want to find the point where these two clones overlap with one another. So around here, the hands are going to touch there. So we'll make a cut there. So we'll go Command Shift D. Then we'll move over to the point where the second clone has gone past the first clone. So there, there you go. You can see they're no longer interacting. So we'll make a cut there, Command Shift D. Now from here, you just want to increase the opacity on all of those layers. So we'll highlight all of those three layers. We'll press T on the keyboard and we'll pull the opacity from 36 up to 100. Now we can ignore this part of the video. We can ignore this part of the video. We just want to focus on this middle section. So we want to cut this person out from their background. So I'm going to go to the start of that clip. We'll go into the Roto Brush icon here. So the Roto Brush tool and we'll double click this footage layer. So we're inside this layer and as you can see, we've got this green brush here and this is basically our Roto Brush. So in order to cut this person out, we just want to paint within that layer. Now, as you can see at the moment, it says draw rotor brush and refine edge strokes at full resolution. This is basically saying that in order to do the roto brush, we want to make sure that we're in the best possible quality. So we'll go back to the composition and change this from third to full. I have it down on third or quarter when I'm doing some editing because it makes the computer run faster, but roto brush likes it at full. So we'll keep that up full and go back to that layer. Now we can just go ahead and try that again. So we'll paint within the subject. And as you can see, it's not perfect. So we'll just hold option that will turn this red and we'll just delete parts of the video that shouldn't be there. And then as you can see, the arm is missing. So we'll just add that back in and we'll just get rid of this bit here. There you go. Now my roto here isn't perfect. So go ahead and zoom in and make sure that your roto is completely perfect. Make sure every part of this subject is there and make sure you haven't got any random bits just appearing in your roto. But once you're happy with that, you can just go ahead and press the space button to play. And that's going to go frame by frame and render that out. So as you can see, it's reading it frame by frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and I'm going to select this pink box, which is the alpha boundary slash overlay color. We'll change this to a color completely different to the scene. So we'll go for a yellow. And then we'll select the red box here. So we'll change that back to yellow, sorry. 
And then you can always increase this as well. So it increases all the way up to 100%. You can see we've got the subject isolated and then you can see different parts appearing and disappearing. So you can see it is quite messy down here. And this is where the other clone was. So you do want to pay close attention to that. If this was your example and you were doing this for your work, then I would say go in and clean that up. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to carry on it like that. So I'm just going to go composition clone. And if we solo that layer, you can see we've got them on their own layer. You can see all the clutter appearing around them though. So I would definitely recommend going in and cleaning that up. But we'll turn that off and we'll play this back. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, you can see it's not perfect, but you're kind of getting the effect now taking place. So let's just close that down. As you can see, we've got our clone on their own layer here for a second. And then this happens. We see the clone underneath. And then the clone disappears again. So what we're going to do in order to prevent that is we're just going to create a mask here. So the mask edge should be around here. So in line with this microphone. So we'll just draw a mask around the left side of the frame. So somewhere around here. There you go. That should do the trick. And then we'll do the same thing at the end as well. So the mask needs to be somewhere around here. There you go. Let's play that back. Let's see how that looks. We've got a weird glitchy thing happening at the start. I'm not sure why that's happening, but we'll start from there. There you go. That's starting to look good. Although the problem is you can see our shadow should be appearing on the table. And when we come back to this layer here, the shadow appears. And that's because we rotoed out the person and not their shadow. So in order to fix that, I'm just going to copy this layer. So we'll go Command C, Command V. We'll extend that all the way back to the beginning. We'll go into the mask. We'll delete that mask. And then we'll just draw a mask around the table. So we'll just draw this mask here. And there we go. We should have the table all the way. There we go. We can see the shadow appearing on that table for the entire duration of the clip. So let's play this back. See how that looks. That looks pretty good. Although the problem is now you can see this mask is starting to cut off this subject. So we just want to go to the point where this mask begins. And as you can see, it's cutting off the arm here. So we're going to make this adjustment here like so. Press M on the keyboard to load mask. Go into mask path and create a new keyframe on the mask path. We'll move over. And when this clone moves over to the right, we're just going to move this mask over. And there you go. That should now look great. So we'll render this out, play this back. There you go. That looks really awesome. Now, what I would recommend from here is to just go ahead and create a new null object. So we'll go new null object, highlight all of these clone layers, and we'll use this link tool. So we'll parent pit whip that to the null. And now we can go ahead and we can adjust the position. We can go ahead and animate the scale. We could do what we want here. So we'll go new keyframe scale position at the beginning. We'll move to the end of that. We'll increase the scale, move the position over. And now you can see we've got this digital camera movement on our video footage, and that's just making this look a lot more believable. So there you go. I know my example isn't exactly the cleanest example in the world. The Roto definitely needs a little bit of work. So if this was your example, if this was your work, I'd recommend going in and cleaning up that Roto. But there you go. That is the technique for how you create a more complex clone shot inside of Adobe After Effects using some basic rotoscoping, masking, and then add some expression. But there you go. That is how you create a more complex cloning shot inside of Adobe After Effects using some basic rotoscoping and masking. So thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you in the next video. See you there.